Welcome back, guys, to Barcoded Chats with your girl, Nyteria and Sydney. We are back giving you the weekly hot gossip, the Potomac hot tea, and of course, a food review. Yes, so make sure you stay tuned for the entire episode. Let's kick off episode 8 of Barcoded Chats. This week, we went on over to House of Fries over on Antoine. It is kind of close to Acres Home, so for anybody, my people, you know, the north side area, it is over there. Um, y'all need to go check it out. It's actually close to Tillwell and Antoine. Yes, Tillwell and Antoine is probably the closest cross streets. Or it might be Pinemont and Antoine. Look at, just Google how surprised. <laughs> I know for sure it's on Antoine in that vicinity. Go ahead and Google them. The burgers are bomb. Very delicious. Their brisket fries, gas with the barbecue sauce. I got a Sunrise Burger, which came with the fried egg on top. Oh my God, so good. And both of our burgers and a large fry was like $13. Yeah, they're very reasonably priced. Um, They have breakfast as well. They have bomb breakfast tacos. I've had them myself at work. Um, I believe they open around 7 and they close at 4. So they do close early and they're not open on Sundays. They do close real early. I, I definitely put my order in at like 3.45 today. But I got there by 3.57 and they had my food ready and they handed it right over. No issues, no nothing about me showing up that close to closing. It was totally fine. Everything went well. So Yeah, it's a really small place. It's like a mom and pop shop. Burgers are really good, so go check them out. We'll be here next week for another hot food review. This week, we are going to discuss mental health. Mental health is a big thing right now. It's definitely a big thing during quarantine because we've seen and, you know, been looking at so many crazy things. Of course, more people are at home, so they're watching the news more. So people are able to see more things going on in the world and... We just had the whole hurricane thing going. It's fires in California. We have to stay locked down. People can't go places. So it's really driving people crazy. And it's also triggering people's mental illnesses. Yes, I can speak for myself. I went back to therapy at the beginning of this quarantine and I'm very glad that I did. I know some of my other friends who have gone to therapy, some people who are still wanting to seek therapy out. You know, they want to seek it out having been in quarantine. So we just want to talk to you guys about our experiences, about what we see, and just give you some great resources um, to wrap the segment up about where you can just kind of learn more and continue to share. But also, make sure you check out and follow our Instagram and Twitter at Barcoded Chats. We will be sharing all of this information on those platforms as well. Some of the mental illnesses that are really known and prone in, you know, the community that we're in, I know a lot of people probably think that mental illness or mental health issues happen mainly in poverty areas, but that's not true. Yes, you may see it more in poverty areas because people in the lower income areas aren't able to afford certain accommodations or they aren't able to be available to certain resources so that's why we're here to give you the resources today mental illness is everywhere it's all over rich people have it poor people have it it's not a certain gender certain color certain race thing so everybody needs to be aware of it i know a lot of people don't like to admit that they have mental illness or even want to acknowledge it but in these days and times it's definitely something that you have to face, get through it, work through it, and have definitely support around you 100%. And it comes in all shapes and form, you know, you have severe depression, mild depression, you have people who are bipolar, you have schizophrenia, you have personality disorders, there are all types of things in all forms, you have OCD, autism, and I actually didn't know phobias was a mental health issue until I was researching. Phobias is definitely a mental illness. Some people think like just being bipolar or just having schizophrenia is 
a mental illness, but a lot of people don't know having anxiety is is a big mental illness, and it's a mental illness that people really might not know they have until they're in a situation to where they have an anxiety attack or a panic attack, and at that time, you know, it's a little late because you need somebody to act act fast on what, you know, somebody that's knowledgeable about that mental illness, so... You know, please go out there, get checked. Like Sydney said, it's so many different ones. And you can't only just have one. You can have multiple things, you know, so. No, definitely. And that's the thing. People kind of have to do their own research, kind of, for mental illness. um, Where I feel that schools, they don't. And maybe we'll speak to high schools and middle school. Because when I was in college, you know, they did make that very known and we had um, counseling centers and things to go to, you know. They made sure we had all kinds of stuff. So I think college does maybe handle it a little bit better. Um, but as far as like high school and things, sometimes they like to maybe pick which kids needed something based on behavior things. And that's another thing. People want to go off of behavior sometimes, which it can be a telling thing, but mental illness can be very silent and that's why some people can walk around not even realizing or just thinking that they're okay or that's why I think people jump to social media and then they start asking questions they want to see if people feel the same way they've been feeling right you know people just want to figure out kind of what's going on inside of them so I think maybe if uh, high schools and middle schools allow kids to like feel more and to just um, be able to say what they were feeling and not get it shut down because I feel like people like to shut down anxiety and they like to dismiss people with autism or dismiss people with OCDs or with phobias and things like that and um and not just people in school it can be your friends it can be your family members we've all gone through having things about us be dismissed or not taken as seriously um and that's why we have some really good places here in Houston like um, National Alliance for Mental Illness here in Greater Houston. They have educational classes. They have groups you can join. You can become a member to like volunteer as well so you can help other people. Um, so if, you just, if you're somebody who has a person with mental illness in your family, that may be a great place to look up and take some educational classes together so that y'all can learn how to deal with that person and not try to push them off to the side or push them away. Like Sydney said, a lot of you know um, schools, middle schools and high schools have counselors that are in school. And I know most districts have counselors for elementary schools as well because I know I had a counselor. But I am an elementary school teacher and I work at a charter school and we actually don't have an on-campus counselor. So that's kind of something that I feel like every school needs, no matter if you're a district, private school, charter school, whatever. I still think you need a counselor because it doesn't matter what age, like mental illness doesn't have an age gap. It doesn't have an age cap. It doesn't have nothing. Like um, a lot of people don't know Um, According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 50% of individuals will be diagnosed with a mental illness in their lifetime. So, like I said, I mean, it could be something so simple as depression. And you may just think like, oh, I've been sad for these past few days or a few weeks. But you have to look at the bigger picture. Like, you're sad, but what are those feelings that you're feeling while you're sad? Or what made you feel that way? And the only reason why I know is from experience. I... I have anxiety myself, I've suffered from depression, like, I have panic disorder, like, I have all those things, so therefore, I have to, you have to be able to talk to yourself and, you know, try to get yourself back in an okay place when you're having a panic attack, or when you're having an anxiety attack, or you need to be around people that, like I said, is going to support you and know what to do, and how to talk to you and how to deal with you during those hard times, because, like I said, mental illness is something that can be overwhelming, to somebody like they may think oh my gosh I have mental illness there's something wrong with me there's not necessarily something wrong with you so I mean it's just something that it has to be out there has to be talked about you have to go out there and get checked you have to go talk to a therapist or a doctor or a psychologist something of that sort to try to get to the deeper root of what's wrong and it's okay that something's wrong it is okay I had to to come to terms with that myself. It is okay that something's wrong. Everything's not going to be perfect. You're not going to have control over everything. 
just gotta work work through life. It's already hard. Yes, and definitely kind of jumping back to finding people that support you and understand that. That is very crucial um, because, like, yeah, if you already think, you know, if you put in your head that you think there's something wrong with you and then you socialize with people who also believe the same thing, it's just not going to be a good path for you. And you're not going to be able to find the resources and the help that you need. And you're going to kind of keep running from it. So definitely, you know, let your friends and family know what's going on with you. Like I said, maybe suggest educational classes to them, you know. Let them know that this is something real and it's happening. I have my best friend, she has anxiety and I've been there. I've had to talk her down through an anxiety attack, you know. So I know the skills and I know the tools how to help her. So that's helpful. I know it can be scary though, like as we say all of this and we talk about all these resources and stuff, I know it can be scary though to book that first therapy appointment or to even look for a therapist. So let's just have a little personal side note. My first introduction with therapy, I wasn't open to it. Um, and I, if you know me, you know I'm all therapy all day, all the time, but my first um, initial you know, little dabble with it I really didn't want it. I didn't want any piece of it. Um, my dad had just died and my mom pretty much made a surprise appointment for me and put my ass in the car and literally told me we was going somewhere we were not going until I was like looking at them. I was like, where yes. are we? And then we pull in and I'm just like, what? And she didn't want to tell me because she didn't want, she, you know, she knew it might be a push in the pool. So she lied to me, which my mom doesn't usually do that. She doesn't like to take that tactic, but she did. Um, in the long run, though, it was very helpful for me. Like, looking back at 26 now, and I was about 13, 14 at the time, I did need that because my mom didn't know how to handle it. She was, she lost her husband. She was handling her own things. So, some, and sometimes that's okay if we have any parents listening to us, you know, that is okay you, if you cannot always help your child. Like, definitely get some other resources, get a, a third party, reach out to another, um, you know, friend of the family. You don't have to take it on all yourself. And that's also what I'll say to anybody else, you know. Maybe ask some of your friends, um, find some groups online and stuff, you know. I know Twitter can be a little dangerous sometimes, depending on what you're looking for, but there is a helpful side to Twitter out there, and, you know, Twitter can be helpful, and you can go, and you can find some places, and maybe you can start with some groups or something, maybe not therapy right off the bat, because I know that money and having insurance does come into play when we talk about therapy and things like that. But also... You know, if you are out there and you have any type of medical insurance, please check with your medical insurance and see if your therapy or mental any type of mental illness help is covered. Sometimes your insurance, if you if you have insurance through your job or something like that, they will cover a portion of your therapy or mental illness counseling or anything like that. So please look into that. Like we said, we will be having resources. We will be dropping different therapy sites and different um, sites where you can go get answers if you have any questions for that. So we'll definitely be dropping that. Um, you know, and also, me and Sydney always talk about, you know, normalizing therapy and mental illness in the black community because black people, you know, they do not like to... I know, especially in the older generation, they feel like if you talk to a therapist, you're telling your business. Are you telling the family Ooh. business? So they feel like if you got a problem, you just need to go to church, or you just need to talk to the Lord, or you just need to pray, which is very true. You need to give all your problems to the Lord, let it go, because you ain't got no control over it, which is very true. But I also do feel like sometimes you have so much things bottled up inside you, you just need somebody that doesn't know anything about the situation, like a therapist or a counselor that knows nothing about you, nothing about your family, nothing about your past, nothing about the situation, will be non-biased and will just hear you out fresh and they'll give you their honest opinion. 
And sometimes you need that. Like Cindy was talking about her her first visit to the therapist. I went to a therapist as a child when my parents got divorced. I really don't too much remember it. But my first um, visit with the therapist as an adult, all I'm going to tell y'all is an hour is not enough. And Never. Um, bring tissue. So, because you don't think that, you don't have the mentality that you're going to go in there and cry. You know, you don't have the mentality that you're going to go in there and you're just going to pour out your feelings to a stranger. But once you get comfortable to that person and that person's like, okay, tell me, tell me this, tell me that. And you have so much bottled in, it's like you get diarrhea at the mouth. Like you just like, okay, I finally get to tell somebody or I finally get to let my feelings out where nobody's going to judge me or nobody's going to go back and repeat it to somebody else or nobody's going to be like, she's crazy or, you know, something like that. So I really want black people to come together and know that mental illness is real and, You know, I know black people, we like to, you know, smoke weed to cover stuff up or drink to cover stuff up or party to cover stuff up or whatever. But substance abuse is also a a sign of mental illness. If you don't believe me, look it up. Google it. You know, look look it up everywhere. Substance abuse is a sign of mental illness. And, you know, we do like to do those things to cover up our feelings and not face the fact and all of that. But we got to do better as a black community. We got to do better as a community, period. We have to get out there and get help and help people because the only way our kids are going to do better is if we do better. And the only thing I can do as a teacher is to to teach these kids that it's okay to be different. It's okay to speak out if you have a problem, if you have a question, like if you're not comfortable, like please tell us so we can get you. you, and, And as an adult, as a parent, you have to talk to your kids. You have to talk to your kids. You have to let them know what's going on in the world what they should feel, how they should feel. If they're feeling a certain way, if they have a problem, please come talk to you. If they don't feel comf- comfortable talking to you, like Cindy said, call a family friend, call a, call a counselor, call a teacher, call somebody. Hopefully they feel comfortable enough to talk to somebody. Not only as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, as an elder, anybody that's having any type of mental illness issue, Please, I hope you have somebody to reach out to. If you don't, hit us up, barcodechats at gmail.com. If you need somebody to talk to, we are here for you. I love giving advice. I love to talk. Let us know. Reach out to us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anywhere you'll find us. You need somebody to talk to, we are here. You have any questions, we will give you any resources that we can. We're in this together. No, but really. um, Because, like I said, I've been to therapy, active in therapy. Um help some other people find therapy. I talk about therapy all the time. Like, I like to, my friends, you know, they usually come to me for stuff. I like to think I'm pretty decent. They keep coming back. So please email us. Like, if you're like, nah, I still don't have nobody I want to trust this information with, just tell us. We just want to help. So really, truly. And yes, thank you for bringing up black people and sharing their information with doctors because it's not just we you know that it's just with the i mean medical community in general black people are just very standoff offish too yeah black people love to not even go to the doctor for a simple code because they're scared that they may come out and say it's cancer or something like that exactly we cannot be scared to go to the doctor no and you know i'm sorry if i'm just speaking for black community um it might be other communities that are like this as well. I can only speak for my my people. But yes, anybody in the whole entire world, if you need help, if you feel any type of way, please call a doctor. Please. And there are, if you don't want a doctor, doctor, there are, um, you know, what, what am I, the word I'm looking for? Um, like homeopathic or just more natural ways, you know, there are natural doctors out there. If you would prefer to take that route, get you some oils, get you some herbs and heal yourself, but please heal yourself. You know, do sage. your research. We're big into sage. Yes, big into saging around here. Crystals, trap the negative energy. You know, keep cleansing, keep pushing forward, and keep just, also just tell people though, we, we can't bottle things up. Also, journal. Journal is a great first step, honestly. If you should be able to pick up a pencil and put it to some paper and at least write your thoughts out, you got to be able to at least do that. Write it out on some paper. Write whatever the hell you think. Write it all out and then do like Oprah say and throw it away. Just for right now. 
But that's why I say get a journal so you can keep it and you can read it. I have a journal and man, I look back and I reread my first journal entry sometimes just to remind myself of where I was and where I am now. Because you have to be able to see your progress because some days you're going to feel like I'm stuck. I'm stuck again. I'm back in the hole. I'm back in this place. It's dark. No, it's not. Remind yourself. Think back and just remind yourself of the good stuff. That's the trick I like to use. Here we go, a little trick. I Sometimes when I'm getting stuck or I'm getting in that place and I'm falling down that hole, you just kind of have to go back and just say, okay, no, like, what, what have I accomplished this year or this week or this month? Like, remind yourself of the good shit you have done because you have done something because we forget the things that we accomplished and we focus on the shit that we don't get done. So just remind yourself that you are doing something and you'll see that you're moving forward. And just like knowing that you have taken a step, you can take another one. So don't think that, you know, today is it. The last, you know, this ain't the last, okay? There's definitely more to come. Always some more to come, okay? Definitely. So like we said, we will be posting good sites for you to look for a good therapist. Um, some good podcasts for you to, you know, just refresh your mind and, you know, think happy thoughts, think positive thoughts. And you can do this. We can do this. We got this. We're together. Yes. So we thank you. If you're still here with us, we are now, kind of ironically, going to move into Housewives of Potomac. Yes, yes. You know our girls had to come through and cut up on Sunday. So we're going to give you all that good tea. These girls get some mental health in too, though. They go to therapy. So even these housewives out there going to therapy. They are. Yeah, and some of them, they're going to have me needing a little therapy. This episode. Oh, my goodness. Lord. Girl, with the whole Ashley thing, how many times? That's what I was saying on the last episode. Are we going to need too many people to get news that Michael is out there doing something he has no business with either A, a woman, B, a man, or anybody because you're married and you have a newborn at home. Hello. And you pregnant again, sis. But yes, this, is, but this is a pregnancy after all of this happens. Right. Because technically, you know, the show was filmed months ago. So you still chose to get pregnant with this man after all. Y'all, so y'all made it through this apparently. Right. Exactly. Which so let's just keep that in mind about Ashley. See, and that's the other thing that everybody been saying since day one. Sis know what's up. Sis is in an arrangement, and we just don't know sis is in the arrangement. Yeah, because that's the only way, like, and, and uh, it's crazy because Candace and Giselle pulled you aside away from everybody to tell you, and they even told you, like, we're not going to go back and tell the group. But then you still decided to tell the group the next morning because you wanted to, I guess, have Monique not be mad of the reason why y'all were out, out, not, like, talking without her and not at her bonfire, but... Girl, you don't have no... You don't need to tell them. It's not their business. You don't need to tell them what's going on. Just like she didn't need to tell Giselle and Candace about um, Michael messing with the girl, whatever whatever he was doing a few months ago. Like, why would you tell them when you know they use any type of little inch and take a mile with it? Whether it's true, whether it's not true, I don't understand why you feel like you just need to tell these girls your business if you're gonna just stay with the man it don't make no sense she didn't really tell her business she just said that they gave her some information but she didn't say what the information was though they don't even need to know because they already know that it's something foul because if you took if you had to take ashley away from the whole group to tell her we already know it's about your man and we already know it's about something. Oh, wait, she did cool. say it was about Ashley. She did say Michael. Actually, she did kind of, she was like, they gave me some information about Michael's whereabouts. Something that he allegedly did last Thursday about his night. Michael, yeah. So she did kind of tell on herself. Sorry, y'all. Mm. I wasn't paying. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Monique still blew the, the whole thing out of proportion. Oh, yeah. Monique is mad at her situation where her own husband, she's mad at Candace. She was mad that she was left out of that conversation and they were, quote, unquote, in her house. That's why she's ultimately mad and she went off about 
them not being at the bonfire. Like, girl, first of all, it wasn't a bonfire. It was just a fire that you had outside in your backyard. Two, they came out there, and y'all probably wasn't doing nothing but roasting some marshmallows and talking. So it's not like they probably missed anything special. No, but really, I'm like, girl, you really mad about that? No, you're really mad because it's just Candace, and you just don't like her, and you want to find any reason to have an issue with this girl. But then I found it funny that she still, you know, stayed up with Candace and Karen and Wendy that night and drank and, you know, That's smoked a little weed. We think they were smoking weed. But Monique said it was CBD. Of course they're going to cover it up. But if we, if y'all tune into the last episode last week, if you look very closely, you will see a shot of Candace in the kitchen smelling. The baggie of quote unquote CBD. But if we all know what quote unquote CBD is, CBD has no smell. So what are you smelling? We the only thing that has smell is weed. So, you know, if, if sis was smoking CBD, mm, I don't know, baby. She was smelling it and hoping that it turned into some gas. I don't know. <laughs> but Yes, they were smoking a little something, looking a little lean to the left, lean to the right. They drank a whole bottle of Fireball. Now, if you and me know what Fireball really tastes like in real life, they was on one. Okay? Fireball will get you there with enough of it. Because last we seen on the show, Karen was on shot nine. And the bottle was still half full, girl. So if they finished the whole bottle, that means Karen probably took about 10, 11, 12 shots. 15. Ooh, yikes. But you see, when Karen got drunk, she started talking about her shit was moist. I was dying. She's talking about she want her money back. Okay, all of it right now. Right now. <laughs> she said she need that back. She said she said she could have got up and left, but she married to Ray. Baby, she love Ray. But I'm trying to see, is Ray falling out of love with her? Because her and Ray are having a few little issues. I don't know if Ray's falling out of love or if Ray just don't give a fuck about her businesses. He probably don't because like we all know, most men don't want an independent woman. They don't want a woman that's out here making her own money in case, God forbid, he up and leave one day. You know, a man, a man probably want to see her down and out. He probably don't want to see her doing better, better than him or doing just as good as him. So, because when she didn't have no businesses and she was really like a little stay-at-home wife, just taking care of him, he was happy-go-lucky. Now that he's retired and she out here in these streets doing her appearances and perfume line and all that and traveling, he don't like that. Because he being stuck, stayed at, he's staying at home. Mm-hmm. But he really can pack up and move, you know, move around with her. That's really what he should do. I don't understand why he don't. But I guess, honestly, the only husbands that are like decent are Candace's and Wendy's. Yeah. Because Monique's husband, <laughs> we see he lazy. And you see every time he gets around somebody or on camera, he's always talking about sex, referring something to sex. They said, say something nice about your wife. Everybody, you know, they did a funny imitation of what their wife would say. Of course, his ass had to come out here and talk about sex. Chris's was funny. <laughs> Hi, I'm Candace. And then he did the light switch. <laughs> let me switch. Let me flip the switch. <laughs> then he got the little butter knife. Get the... out! <laughs> that was too funny. That was really funny. But it was honestly the end of Potomac was really just like the best because they was really still stuck at this goddamn uh, house out of nowhere. So really the big juicy parts were when Robin no, Giselle and Candace gave Ashley the news. If Ashley said okay. 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 Right. She okay. okayed them to death baby. She okay. wasn't about to give them no type of reaction. None. And that's the one good thing about Ashley is when they give her some sh- like shitty news she'll just okay. No, whether, no matter if she's hurt, if she's dying inside if she's happy, whatever. She's okay, okay. And then she gonna like she do, at being a grown woman that she is, she wait till she get home and she handle it. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I'm not about to sit here and act a fool in front of everybody yelling him and do all that because that's what y'all want. Mm. That's what y'all want me to do. Mm. And I'm not about to give y'all no attention. They talking about, you don't have to report back to us. 
I wasn't. I wasn't going to report back to you. That's what you want me to do. That's why you're saying you don't have to. Bitch, I wasn't. Okay? Yeah. That That is crazy. So, but it's really, they. it's almost time for the fight, y'all. It is. It's almost time for the fight. But the, I think that means that the season's about to be over. It is. I think it is. It's all, but like you said, though, who knows if the fight is still gonna, you know, just so happen to be at the end of next week's show, right? And they're gonna push it to the week after that. They'll probably push it, or they'll probably put it at the very end and then do it to be continued. I'm just wondering if it's as bad as they say it is. I just don't know. I mean, it kind of looks like it is because it looks like they might have really connected and might have really fought. <laughs> It was just the way Ashley was just looking. She, I don't know, the way they were yelling, the way Ashley was looking, the way they pulled both each other's hair. Yeah, everybody was hollering. And they were showing the ground like it got, you know, crazy. Yeah, like as if the cameraman got hit or they had to, you know, people had to jump to, you know, to their rescue. I don't know. Child, you know you'll find it here. Okay, so come on back next week. Thank you for scanning in with us again on another week of Barcoded Chat. All of my Houston people, stay with us. All of my out-of-town people, come with us. We're with Barcoded Chats in the Houston streets. Let's get it.